So first and foremost, sequels, $200 million CGI movies, genre movies, why make a small, smart adult drama? We oddly saw this as an IMAX 3D movie, but um, the powers that be just wouldn't go for it. No. No? No. No. Small, smart drama. I like. Yes, that. and. No? Yes, and. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Let's start over. Uh, this is just a story that we wanted to tell for a long time. This is a story that seemed human about people talking and listening and choices and questions and romance and drama. And it seemed to have all the elements, like when Lee and I were working on, of like what we wanted, like of cinema, you know what I mean? Trains and Paris and the rain and like all that stuff. So it just was something that we were really attracted to and it had a key question and key story at the, at the heart that we were really interested in. And it looks great in IMAX. <laughs> it does? Oh good, we never saw it. So, they're all androids too. <laughs> I think I think Rory's a cyborg. Mm -hmm. He's a Nexus 6. Yep, it's 7. Is he 7? 7. Alright, another level. So one of the most interesting things that's been happening is as we screen the movie... That's why I didn't die in three years. Anyway, keep going. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, no, they died. Next is six. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. We're keep... total nerds. No, please. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's been happening is as we screen the movie, you know, we did a group... screened for a group of teen girls the other night who came out talking about how great and romantic and lush it was. And then we've been screening for a lot of the press who have reacted to kind of the plagiarism angle, especially with what's going on in the news. What's your version of the words? When you see this movie... What's the version that you yourself take away from it? A romantic drama. Romantic drama about choices, consequences for our choices, you know, and how we live with the choices we make. And one of the challenges of this movie has been describing it, especially in a 30-second TV spot. Oh, yeah. But they I, did a great job, yeah, I thought. Their spots are great. You're like, well, mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> the jury's out. <laughs> what are the movies, the books, the comics, whatever inspired you that... You, when you look at this movie, you see it as the offshoot of all these different things. Like, what are some of the movies that inspired you? What are the, some of the books and movies that inspired you when you were thinking about your place in this movie? For me, it was the script. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't have to go outside of it. I mean, Lee and I always work with references just in, in our shorthand of conversation, you know. This is like that scene, oh, yeah, yeah, perfect, and that's just like, but there's so many different ones, and this, this story came to us very organically, and it really just came out of a really simple conversation about, like, what would happen if you lost, you know. I mean, there's a famous story about Ernest Hemingway losing some stories, and uh, we started discussing that, and then it became a question of what would happen if you found them. What would happen if he stopped writing? What if, would you know they were great if you found them? What would happen? You know, and it was just like a Pandora's box of questions. And, uh, you know, different scenes, I guess, we use different references in, in our writing process just as a shorthand to discuss. Visually, I remember just looking at this poster when we were shooting that scene. Uh, we were sort of blocked to just laying on the bed, you know, in a very sort of generic way. And then because of, the, you know, the opening of the suite hereafter, and they're on the bed, we decided, and that's literally just us basically mimicking the suite hereafter. The opening shot of that movie. And the last question Remember is... Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th this movie had a fairly long path to screen. Mm. You guys have had a fairly long path to working together. Give us a little... Give us a short version of that. We've known each other since we were 10. Uh, we became quick friends in, in the, the suburbs of Philadelphia where, you know, it was hard to find a, a kid who loved film as much as we did, so we clung to each other, along with Alvin Williams rather fast. And then, um, and then um, he got into Carnegie Mellon early in high school. He was one of the first person, people to get into a college. And I remember that was like a huge thing for me because I thought, wow, he's really going to do this. Because I always said I was going to be an actor since I was 12, but he was actually doing it and he was in film. But I used to come and say, hey, you this have to... This isn't the short version, is it? No. But I used to say, you have to do theater all the time because he would tell me that he wanted to be an actor and then yeah. he would never do anything. I said, you have to come do one of the plays with us. And he wouldn't do it. And then I saw a tape of him uh, do a, like a extra credit project where he played like an Irish, like an IRA member getting beat up. And he was so good in it in like sixth or seventh, eighth grade. What was it? Ninth grade? Yeah, ninth grade, I think. And a few years later, the words. Yeah. Well, many years later. 